Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's lesson, we're gonna look into how to create something like this. So we're gonna do a simple clock, go through some basic modeling tutorials, and this is a tutorial that's suitable for beginners, but you need to know some of the basic stuff like UI and so on. So let's get ahead uh, and get started. And uh, I'm going to put this aside. Okay. All right. So based on the picture, actually, I think it is better that we save this image down to our folder. And we're going to import this picture into our scene. So now go to here. Let's go to front view and click F for front and create a picture, take a plane, right click. And we're just going to go to our picture and check out the size by using right click properties. So you look into here, this is 440640. So we're gonna go to here. 440640. Alright, knowing that this picture it's it's kind of big in sizes, so we might just reduce one decimal here and down to this. Okay, so now let's go to render setup. And we're just gonna use scan line for now and go to material editor. Open this up and we're gonna drag a standard legacy material and connect this, click and drop to here. And after that, we have to go to diffuse color click and drag it out so that we can connect to the picture that we just downloaded a while ago. So click bitmap and choose our picture. Right here. Okay. There you go. All right. So with the picture display here, it makes our modeling process a lot easier. So now go back to P. P stands for perspective. And we can put it anywhere. We can scale up or scale down. That's up to us. So we're not too concerned about the actual uh, measurements of, of this clock. We're just going to learn about the modeling techniques. Okay, so now uh, from the look of this, this is the shape of a cylinder. And we have a few steps up and then in the end the front part is more narrow comparing to the bottom part so go to here cylinder go to front view click F for front and we're just gonna drag a cylinder from here and push your mouse a bit to get some height left click and right click to finish now go back to perspective and click F4 to turn on the wireframe. So we have some segments here, but I don't think we need it right now. So I'm going to go to here, hide segments and right click and put it down to turn it down to one. Okay. And as for the sites, you know, number of sites, we can leave it at, at 18 if we want to, or probably we can go up to 36. Uh, for a smoother edge. Okay, but after all, we will still be adding Turbo Swift in the end, so I guess 18 is good for now. So uh, I think this is this is kind of you know like a comparing to this. This is too thick. Okay, so I'm gonna scale down my radius just a bit, and I'm gonna reduce the height a bit as well, and also. I have to make sure this is being aligned to the center of the grid. So just right click 
on the X at the bottom column here and then right click on Y on the arrows and as for Z we'll, we'll just leave it there okay so after that we need to convert this cylinder to editable poly right click and convert next we can click number four to assess the polygon mode click this and we're gonna use shift and scale to make an inset okay so press R for scale hold shift key left click and drag just like that okay and after that I'm gonna switch back to our move tool and move it up just a bit okay and after that you see there's an extension of that so hold shift key and extend all right so there's another step it goes in okay press R for skill hold shift key and drag to make an inset and hold shift I, I think this has to be slightly smaller hold shift key and drag further and change back to scale hold shift key and drag to create an inset for that okay once we're done if you look at it closely so you see there's a, a bit of you know extra in so this the surface goes in a little bit so from here we're gonna go we're gonna go back to move tool hold shift key and drag just a very short distance and it will give it a little bit, a little bit of gap here and uh, so that is our glass all right so we can turn it off so that's pretty much the basic shape that we're gonna do and let's say we, we try to turn on turbo smith so if you go to modifier list you click the drop down menu just type tur turbo and click F4 to turn it off so you see this looks kind of too round okay after turbo and then this part seems to have a bit of problem see that some some artifacts it's a polygon age problem same goes at the to the back side you know like it looks like a flower so we're gonna go back to here and what causes those to happen and that is actually due to the reason why uh, our surface okay isn't any uh, isn't having any uh, sorry for, for today you know like my my mouth is gonna like having some problems okay so I, I couldn't I couldn't speak properly <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll just try to, to speak slow slower this time so now back to here so because we are having so much points and uh, a it's supposed to to be you know like uh, quads or triangles okay so if we can we try to keep it within quads or triangles because if you have n gone which is like multiple points and polygons without an ending so it tends to create those problems so go to here uh, polygon hold shift key and drag to uh, make a inset hold shift key and drag for one more time and the third time after that we click collapse okay so I make multiple edges you know like age loop so that I can keep my flower looking pattern the weird pattern around and the circle okay it doesn't affect the rest so now let's get back to here click the move. see this is good all right so now we're gonna fix the backside go back to here polygon shift key okay because I remember that uh, backside you need to put batteries you have buttons you know like to, to twig uh, to uh, activate like the alarm clock okay turn on and off so we got some cover just like that and hold shift key we're gonna pull it slightly backwards and then we do the same thing once twice the third time collapse 
Okay, so we're gonna ignore the buttons uh, for now, like uh, because we're only looking at this picture, and this is what we have on the reference. Okay, so if you go to here, turbo, it's looking better. This is this is good. This is good. Okay, now the next part will be how to make the edges more solid after turbo smooth. Okay, so I'm gonna start. You know, applying some basic materials to get a gray shading. So drag it out, connect this to here, and I'm gonna change my initial basic color default to black. Okay, so that whenever I look at my object, it is gray color, and uh, the lines are black. So which makes it easier to to see. Okay, so now. If you want to make it solid, we have to start adding edge loops or lines, okay, along these corner. So, say for example, I want this to be sharp, so I need to have, you know, like an edge loop here from the bottoms up, and then another edge loop here, and this this column. So go to go go back to here, click Edit, click Swift Loop. So Swift Loop, it's a quick way to add edge loops. So if I want to add a vertical edge loops, like from, from here, so I need to point to a horizontal line. Same goes to here, point to the, the opposite directions. Okay, so I need one here, one here. Now right click and let's have a look. So you can see that like this one turns into slightly sharper whenever we add a turbo smooth. Okay, so I think this has to remain something like that, and then these edges has to be sharp as well. Okay, so now turn it off, back to here, go back to Swift Loop, activate Swift Loop, and I'm just gonna add one line through here, one line through here, one line through here, one line through here, through here, here, here. here. And same goes to here. Right click. So I'm basically adding three lines, you know, like one, two, three. Okay, these are three lines. So three lines is good for, for it to maintain the sharpness. So go to Terror Smith. See, we're, we're good. Okay. It's looking, sort of looks uh, quite nice. Okay. Now, let's look into. Uh, you know, like the, the bell ring up here. So with the bell ring, it looks like a sphere shape, okay, but just cut being cut into half. So we can use this here and go to top view. Okay, T for top and just drag a sphere. Right click finished. And we're just going to put it somewhere here. Okay, go back to front and pull it up. Okay, I guess it's, it is a little bit too too big in sizes, so maybe just press R and scale it slightly smaller. Go back to front. Now let's turn it into editable poly. Right click, editable poly, and same. I'm gonna apply the same uh, gray shader, but just right clicking it, assign material to selection, and let's turn our green color default to black. So our wireframe is in black. Now click number four, drag and select the bottom half and delete the polygons. So it seems like this is too round and this has a little bit of flat uh, fan top. So we can go to here and... Okay, I guess I'll, I'll just scale it like this. Okay, seems good. But just that uh, this is a little bit too short, so we need to extend the bottom part uh, a little bit. So go to border, select the the hole right here, and hold shift key to kind of extend. Okay, and I always like to keep an H loop at the bottom part. Hold shift key and drag further. Okay, something like that. Okay, but if you if you feel like you want this to be broader and wider, 
So we can go back to undo one step and then scale this up just a bit. Okay. And pull it down further. Okay. And back to here, swift loop. And just add one swift loop right here at the bottom part. And after that, let's see if it fits. Okay, seems good to me. So before I make, uh, or before I rotate to this angle, you know, it's actually better that we create the stick inside. Okay, uh, or else later on, whenever we after we rotated this, uh, it might be slightly more difficult for for us to align over. So let's go to top view and create a cylinder. Okay, by the way, that is the shape of a cylinder. Okay, all the way up. So go to top view. Click F3. And just kind of roughly align to this. Drag and pull. Right click. Go back to perspective. Okay, so it's right at the bottom part. So move it up. This seems to be a little bit too thick. So let's uh, reduce the radius. Now let's push it up. Okay, so it, it gets through it slightly. Okay, so from the picture, you know, like the top part, it's round, and then there's some, you know, like a line, groove line, uh, right here. So I think it's it's actually, uh, you know, like a screw and stuff. Like you just screw with your hand, and then it, it locks it in. Okay, but we don't have to create separated parts. Okay, we're just gonna, you know, like blend in the whole thing. So for the top part, let's pull it down. Okay, convert to editable poly. Okay, click number four, click this. So we're gonna use shift and scale again. Shift and scale. Use W to move it up. Okay, shift and, shift and drag, scale again, shift and drag and scale. So we're creating uh, more and more segments up and we scale at the same time to make it looks kind of round at the top part. Okay, after that, let's create this line right here. So let's go to H. Select all the vertical lines, click connect. So actually, in fact, that this, uh, you know, like the lines we created, okay, it's here. It's the, it's actually the same with using Swift Loop, okay. But this is just another uh, method to to get it done, okay. So we add a line here, okay. After that. Let's make an extrude. Just right click, right click first. Push it in. Click F3 to see what uh, how deep it's being pushed in. And let's spread it across. Like make it, you know, like uh, se separate them so you can see some some patterns here. And from this, I want to make a chamfer that's Split, split it up further, just like that. Okay, right there you go. And you see, like right here, it looks kind of ugly, you know. Like after we extruded, it, they all looked faceted. Okay, it doesn't blend nicely with the top part. So this is easy fix. You just select the element, select the whole thing, and just click Auto Smooth. Then it will smooth out the normals and click element to turn it off. Okay, right there. Uh, we have one set of that. Reassign material to here. So now select this, go to front, you can start rotating them. So we can turn on angle snap by clicking this. Just uh, probably 25 degree. I guess this is good. Let's put it here. Okay, leave a bit, bit of gap in, in between the middle. Okay, a bit closer to here. 
All right. If you want to read it further, maybe 25. Just now it was 25. It's 45 better? I don't think so. Okay, yeah, maybe 30. 30 is good. So after we have this, we're gonna copy and make a set and uh, to, the, to the opposite side. So uh, to make it really, you know, like equal that uh, distance, we need to go to here, group it, group. Okay, we can put any names. And after that, we gonna go to hierarchy, effect pivot. And our pivot has to be on the X zero, right click and turn it off. And whenever we mirror this over, it will mirror based on this and it will it'll separate the same distance and make a copy to the other side. So click mirror and we just go with instance. Okay. All right. So there you go. We have this. So is it too big? I guess this is okay. Not too bad. All right, so now let's move on to this top part. So for the top part, uh, we can actually use the spline. You can either use polygon or you use spline. I think spline will be easier. Okay, so now go to here, shapes, lines. So you can, okay, so let's make it equal. So I'm gonna turn on a snap, click this, turn this one off, right click and choose grid points. So probably start, starting from here. Okay, so even though I know like this is not accurate, but we can uh, fix it later, okay? We can make it more accurate and put like lay down to here. So this is just roughly. Right from here to okay, click S to turn off. Click and drag to make a curve. And click and drag to make a curve. And go to here. Somewhere around the middle. Left click and right click to finish. Okay, so we just make half of it. And we're gonna mirror over. So now go to a line, click number one, and this is going to be here. Let's go to top view. Okay, this line has to be here, pointing to the middle part. Okay, I guess this this is good. All right, this is good. So. Uh, we're gonna change our pivot point to the middle go to hierarchy effect pivot right click X to zero turn it off mirror over okay X key so this time we'll be using copy because uh, in a while like, we'll merge these two together and we'll merge the points so it it can be instance okay click OK there you go and for the info instance actually means like if you, if you go back to here I go to groups and I, I, I group it go to here I group it and if I select those vertices and I, I make some changes so you see it applies to the other side as well so for just in case like we still want to modify certain things this one will be following exactly what we do okay now back to here attach Okay, uh, have to make unique. I think I I choose a different settings, uh, but it still seems like an instance. Okay, why do I know it seems like an instance? Because the the text is being highlighted in bold color. Uh, bold bold text. Okay, not not really color. Bold text. So back to here. I what I did back then was I click make unique, so that I can attach the other lines together click okay now even though they are being attached but they are not joined so I'll need to select these two and click well 
Okay, click a few times. I <laughs> have bad habit to make sure it is being weld. Go to rendering, enable a render and the port. And there you go, we have this. Okay, now uh, I think this thickness has to be more. Okay, I think that's some, somewhere around like a 2.1 to 2.0. That's fine. Okay. All right. Now left with with this part. So this part has to be flat, and this part has to be bigger. Okay. So later on, you know, like I forget about this. Uh, Actually, like after we delete or, or we fix it, we might have to redo the mirror again to make sure both sides are perfectly symmetrical. Okay. All right. So let's turn it into polygon. Go to front view. Let's delete one side of it. Now, let's select this. Okay, so we have another section right here. Double click, control backspace to get rid of it. And select polygon. And we can scale it. Okay, yeah, just about, about that. And uh, this part has to be sharper. Okay, so it's really optional, like if you don't want to make it sharper, that's fine, that's up to you. If you want, you might have to tweak it, you know, like uh, manually. Pull it, just like these two. Hold control to add selection. Yeah, probably like that. Okay, so now if you go to here and click turbo. Okay, it's looking something like this, and again, you know, like the star keeps appearing. You know what I mean by stars. So the problematic surfaces. So we need to select that. And we need to make sure this is connected. So select these two. And click connect. Okay, I'm going to fix this. Connect. Fix this. Connect. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Using a cut tool to cut over, cut through it. Click this, go all the way until the end, left click again, and right click to finish. So let's have a look at the turbo version. Okay, not really sharp anymore. Okay, but we'll do our own version. That's fine. Okay, so this has to be uh, slightly, you know, smaller. Okay, we'll just do it like you know, like move it manually. Okay, slight imperfections. Turbo. Okay, there you go. Alright, so redo that mirror again. Or oh, probably. Okay, so there's another way. We don't have to merge it again. So just go to modifier list, click the drop down menu, click SY for symmetry and under symmetry we should choose x that's it okay now we'll solve this now let's go to here and we have something here that's gonna knock the bell like ding dong ding dong ding dong ding dong so that you know like a yeah annoying clock that wakes you up in the morning <laughs> okay i know like this is somewhat a cylinder and then that's another cylinder so yep yeah, just go to here and let's put it right here in the middle. All the way up, right click. Go back to front. We'll put it here. So later on, we might want to put a hole in there. Okay. All right. And let's go to here. Shift and make a copy. E to rotate okay click E to rotate and let's turn on angle snap so that we can rotate 90 degrees 
show up a straight, and let's turn our uh, pivot point to the middle. So go to hierarchy, effect pivot, center to object, turn it off, and move it back to here, to align to the middle. So let's make it slightly bigger by using scale. Okay, that's not tall enough. Go back to uh, modifier, make it taller. Up to here. And I believe that like this, somewhat similar to this. This is brown at the end. Okay, uh, actually, I think there's a better shape to do it. Let's go to extended primitives. Let's go with oil tank. Go to top. Okay, what did I click? I just click like a few times until this gets completed. Okay. But if you want to look at what's the actual shape, you know, this is how it looks like. Click and drag. Left click to confirm and then push further to get this round and left click to confirm, right click to finish, you know, like um, medicine that you take or vitamins, okay, vitamin peels, alright, uh, so go to here, hierarchy, effect pivot, center to object, now let's pull over and let's click align, align to this stick here, uh, let's align to position x, y and z, apply, okay, and move it up slightly. And then turn this on and rotate for 90 degrees. Scale it down just a bit. Okay, there you go. So this can this can knock like left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. So make it even smaller. Okay, it has to cover that. Okay, so now let's add some height segments. Okay, I'll leave it here. Okay, I'll, I'll add the segments on my own. Right click, convert to editable poly. Now, click click number two. Select all the, the horizontal lines and click connect. And click two and spread it across to here. Checked. And I'm gonna chamfer this into a double line. Without that, double line checked and I want to go to polygon I want to extrude this strip and that strip inside hold control double click control to add selection hold control double click to select the polygon in a loop now click extrude okay that looks ugly all right don't worry so just go to local normal and reduce them back in all right Make sure it's not too deep. Checked. Turn it off. With that, you go. All right. Okay, we're done. Almost done. But of course, we, we still have materials to go with. Uh, so there are the relics here. So this one looks like a cylinder, and uh, the, the end part has to be more narrow. Okay, the tip. So let's create a cylinder uh, from perspective view. Click and drag. Okay. All right. So we're not too sure like how how long it's gonna be. So we can just make the shape first. Okay. Turn uh, turn to editable poly. Convert. Right click, convert to editable poly, and then click number 4 for polygon. So I guess we'll have to extrude one more segment. Hold shift key and extrude. Drag, okay. And click uh, R on the keyboard to enable scale. And we're just going to scale it down. And hold shift key to make an inset. Shift and drag. Shift and scale. Alright. Okay. Alright, turn it off. Now let's go to here. 
and I wish to move this whole thing down to here. Right, and this has to be here for the front view. Put it right here. Is it correct? Nope, it has to be here. Right in the middle. Okay, rotate, turn on angle snap. So we rotate about hundred forty-five. Okay. Now I want to push it, push it in slightly. Okay, but you see, like our angle, it's either up or right or left, right. So we can go to here and change the local. So that that direction is following our object's own directions, local directions. So I can push the back in easily, just like that. All right, you know, like uh, yeah, we're penetrating through. So if you want to fix it, you can just go to here and and do this like manually. Okay, but it won't be perfect. Okay. After that. Let's uh, go back to here, view, effect pivot, center to object, oh, sorry, uh, center to grid, okay, right click, now, okay, let's uh, turn it off, yes, we already turned it off, let's go to here and click mirror, mirror instance, okay, this is what we need, okay. So if you want some groove line, like like the ones here, then we can have it. Okay, so let's say we go to here and double click this. Chamfer, split it. Without that, select all again, hold control, double click, extrude, right click, change to local normal, and push it in slightly. Okay, there you go. Okay, so once we turbo, yeah, we're gonna have that special like lines. Okay, we can, we can turbo double. Okay, but again, like we have to fix this star thingy. So select polygon, hold shift key and drag once, twice, the third time, collapse. Okay, we, at least we, we have a segment here. Back to P. Let's see how it looks after turbo. Okay, looking, looking solid, looking pretty solid. Pretty good. Okay, so maybe uh, we're gonna add some groove line right here as well. So I'm gonna have like two segments. Right click, convert to editable poly. Double click, select the edge. Hold control, double click. Chamfer to split, split it up without segments in the middle. Checked. Click polygon, control double click, hold control, control double click, and click extra to push it in with local normals. Okay, there you go. Once you have turbo. Alright, it's gonna look nice, but again, like star. Okay, I hit it. So now select polygons, hold shift key once, twice, third time, collapse. Okay, there you go. But it feels like a bamboo right now. <laughs> yeah, because the surface right here, it has a bit of curve, 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 curve. So if it's, if it's a metal, like, you know, maybe we want to make it like even straighter uh, from here. So let us fix this one first once, twice. Actually, twice is also enough. Okay, now 
Let's go to vertical line. Uh, okay, instead of using uh, like a swift loop, because I, I want it to be balanced, so I select vertical lines, I click connect, change the two, and spread it across. So it goes to here. Checked. Go to here. Checked. Okay, so now if you turbo, it will certainly be straight. Okay, no longer a bamboo. Okay, so out of my expectations, alright, turns out to be nice, not bad. Okay, so now back to here the bell. So the bell, it's of course, I know like we didn't do it properly by cracking a hole, like creating a hole in uh, here. Uh, but since it cannot be seen, we'll, we'll just ignore it. Okay, and we're gonna add a shell. So shell make a thickness so that the surface doesn't look black. Okay, inside. So click shell, but we have to go with the inner amount or the outer amount. Okay, there you go. Now we have the basic shape, and uh, I feel like this is a little bit too tall. Okay, so if we go back to the text, we can still change it. All right, so let's select all from here, and make sure we don't affect uh, this this part. We can apply FFT. So go to modifier FFT. And go to control points, select this a bit. We can't do it too much, okay? Or else it this, this, and this will won't be balanced, okay? Just a bit will do. Turn off. Go back to the, the text. Right, back to symmetry. Okay, reselect all. I reassign with that. Okay, so now let's look into about yeah, having that. So back to here, I I need to you know like uh, uh, just detach this this layer and make it into glass. So I'm gonna select this whole thing. At first, I'm just gonna hold control, double click this, click grow selection, make sure the end part is being selected, and I'm gonna click detach. I'm gonna put it as glass, turn it off, select that, extract it. So now back to here, click number three, select the hole, and shift to drag all the way in, and Hold shift key to drag to create, uh, you know, like the uh, inset. Shift key one more time, twice, third time, collapse. Okay, so as for, for this glass, we can just put a shell, shell to it. Okay, we have some thickness, 0.5. Okay, so now if you go to turbo. Okay, this one seems fine. Okay, but you see that this part has to be extremely sharp. Okay, it shouldn't be looking round like this. So it's time for us to add lines. Go to Edit Swift Loop. Go to here and make it as close as possible. And I think this is this is a, a waste. Okay, because we have you know like detach here, so we do not want to simply put lines at non-necessary places double click control backspace to remove those lines okay and uh, probably put one more yeah just to make sure this is sharp left click right click to finish okay this is sharp that you go there you go so let me just save the file like quickly so just in case you know like things gone gone weird the whole thing crashes 
and I'm uh, in troubles. All right. Clocks. Okay, I type it in fast. Uh, C L C. -C okay, what? What is that? C L O C K. Sorry for that. Okay. So now we have to make the, those at middle. Okay. So it's all start starting from the, the, the cylinder base. So let's go to here. Cylinder. Go to front view. And maybe something like this. All right. Pull it up. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, so we do not need so many segments right here. Just right click, and I guess uh, the amount of uh, uh, sites should be should be enough. Okay, and let's convert to editable poly. So we're just gonna make a few copies. Uh, it has to be copy, not instance, because our our long hand and short hand has uh, it's different. Okay, we have an alarm ray color thing as well. Okay, so now this let's select. Okay, the the color is too bright, kind of difficult to see. So assign back the basic shader and put it back to black. Select this. Select the top and bottom. And let's just extrude. Okay. Checked. Deselect that by holding alternate. And this goes all the way to here, maybe. All right. And then we have to make it sharper. So press R for scale and scale it down just like that. Okay. Go back to the text. Select this. I pull it down all the way down. And we can scale it bigger by going sideways. Okay, there you go. One of that is done. So the next one. Okay, we got something like this. And there isn't any back tail. Okay, so make sure we do not put any back tail. Select that. Okay, let's go with the same polygon here at the bottom. Okay, in fact, I'll just go over and isolate them, all of them. So one, this is this is done. I'm gonna put it to the back side. Go here. Shift and drag it. So this is the minute, uh, so it has to be longer. And okay, let's let's extrude for two sections. One here, shift key. One here. Okay, and press R to scale, scale it down. Go back to vertex, scale it, and make it like that. Okay, cool. And the short ones, the hour uh, indicator will be about C. So let's make a copy. Copy. And just that it has to be shorter. So the text, click F3. And we'll make it shorter just like that. Okay, after that, there is the shortest. So like this. And the kind of fine needle so uh, let's hold shift key and drag to make it smaller hold shift key and drag just like that okay so now we're done let's exit from here p back to here okay so now Just 
the shorter, longer, longest. Okay, following the sequence. Select the whole group. I put it, put them in here. Okay, if you think our our stuff is too thick, you know, like all three, I I think this is a little bit thick and fat. So let's scale them down and make it flatter and pull it back to here. Okay, all right. Save the file. And let's save as. Plus, okay, so it becomes clock 01, and let's rotate this, maybe that's here, oops, has to be from the yellow. Wake up at nine o'clock. All right, and this one can turn on towards smooth. Okay, so roughly about that, and then for those at the back, uh, so it's all printed. So let's go to here, and you look for a clock faces, and yeah, this is what we need. So we can either use the uh, the ones that that comes with the number, or this kind of like a uh, uh, different different design okay so I think I, I prefer to use this so let's uh, right click save the image down as a texture clock face all right and back to here and turn it off so I need to detach that clock face polygon. So in order for us to, to assign that texture like easier. So select this, hold control, double click. I always use the grow selection to make the selection easier. Okay, and detach that clock face. Okay. Turn it off. Select that. And go for material. And just gonna make a new one. And for the diffuse, let's connect it all out and go to general bitmap. Choose our clock face. Okay, then let's assign, right click, assign material to selection. And make sure we turn on uh, show texture. So it's not showing. Standard. Let's go with DX. Okay, so it's not showing. So probably that could be the uh, UV problem. Right, let's put it back to standard. Okay, and now let's isolate this. Go to front view. And let's just uh, add some turbo, make it smoother. Now let's apply it unwrap UV. So you click UN and it'll go straight to unwrap UVW. And with the face selected, uh, we're just gonna go to planner and planner from Y, okay, Y directions. Okay, so you put it right there, like perfect, the align. And we can turn this off. Okay, there you go. We got this. Alright, turbo. Now that can be a glass, we can put it back in. But right now our pivot point is so far away from the actual polygon. So go to here. Uh, hierarchy. Effect pivot. Center to object. Turn off the effect pivot. And let's put it back to here. So, so that's so far it's about the models. Okay, if you want to, you know, like do some rendering, like quick rendering to see how it looks like. Of course, we haven't really added texture for the, the hour 
needles, and then the, the rest of it. So we can just put basic colors. So let's have a quick look after we add the materials and see how it looks. Okay, so now pull it out. We're gonna use V-Ray to do it. Yeah, let's add a turbo. Make it really smooth. Okay, so now go to our render setup. Switch to V-Ray. And under V-Ray, let's choose bucket. And go to GI. And we can use brute force. Uh, or we can use irradiance map. So it will be quicker. From high, change to low. I'm just going to do a quick preview. 20. Okay, after that. I think the whole thing is actually in the same materials. Except the ones in the middle. Like the inside. So select all of that. Go to our V-Ray Material Library browser. And let's go for Metal. Gold, a metallic, like a metallic champagne. Okay, we can try either one. Either one is fine. Oh, probably brushed. Okay, gold brushed. All right, let's go for that. Add to library. Oh, wait, what's that? Okay, let's let's do it one more time. Okay, I'm just gonna put it put it here and drag it over. Okay, that's it. With that selected, right click, assign material to selection. Okay, there you go, almost done. Now, let's add a glass material to it. Probably it's you know something transparent, not really a glass that could be plastic. So uh, just go to here, back to here. And use glass. Okay. Um, anything that's clear, drag it and drop. Minimize. Select that. Assign. Okay. So now this is supposed to be red. So I'm just gonna put something red. Uh, let's go to here. View ray sign let's choose red okay I'm not gonna set a specific kind of like a reflected uh, materials or, or object so this has to be black so hold shift key make a copy a sign and we're just gonna put the black close to okay give it a value of one and these two yeah, probably white. Oh, white shouldn't. It's, it's not good. Okay, not good to be to, to be using white because the background is white. So let's give it some other colors. Okay, maybe brown, like a desaturated brown. Okay. Same so goes to here. Assign. All right, there you go. Almost done. So put this back in. And let's put a, a floor. So go to here, plain. Put a simple floor. And go back to here. Very material. And just right click assign. And we're just gonna put a, like a gray floor. Okay, nothing special. Save it again. And now let's start putting it like some, some lighting. So go to here. Go to V-Ray, V-Ray light. So just drag. So it's a it's a plain light, All right? So just move it up. I'm gonna create a few like two or three. Okay, I'm gonna put one here and hold Shift key, copy, and put another one here. And let's go to rendering, environment, and turn on some exposure like V-Ray exposure, for instance. Okay, so that we, we let V-Ray exposure calculates the, the rest of it. Okay, you know, like the shutter speed, the F number, ISO, the white balance, and so on. Okay, I might need one more at the top. 
So shift to make a copy. Go to here. And let's change the size of it. Okay, so uh, let's have a quick render and this one we can turn it off. Okay, let's make it bigger. And I want to have like a background. So convert to editable poly. Click number two, double click the H and shift in, extend it, extend twice, double click this, and I want a softer like gradient background. So I use chamfer to make it smoother and turn it to round. Just like that, checked. Okay, now we're good to go with the renders. Okay, let's click render. It's great, but it seems to be too dark. <laughs> okay, we should we should make it brighter. All right, and as we can see, the edge is not it's not perfect round. Okay, so let's uh, click Escape to turn it off. Zoom out, and uh, this has to be double. Okay, and if you if you want to click to add turbo. Okay, so you can see like the edge is rounder, better. I forgot to assign. Okay, so back to here. Assign. Okay, now we need another bright light in the front. Go to here. Okay, let's go back to the angle again. Let's make it even longer for the background so that it's fully covered. Render. Okay, we see some white panel. You know, like if you if you want to disable the, the view, okay, you do not want it to be seen in our scene. Let's click escape. Select that. Okay, go to options and turn invisible on. Invisible. Invisible man. No, invisible lights. All right, invisible. Now back to here. Render. Okay, it's being cropped. Okay, so you know what? Like I prefer to turn on save frame. So let's check our size, render size. Go to common, like this is 1280. Let's render for a full HD picture. Times 1080. And let's go to here. Right click, configure viewports. Let's save frame, turn on save frame. Inactive view, apply, okay. So that whenever we place our clock like within the composition, uh, it, it won't be cropped. Okay, so now let's go ahead and click to render. This time it will be final. Okay, we can turn on this to prioritize the render. So we want to look at, check it out the, the clock areas. Okay, so it's gonna take a while, like probably about a minute before it finishes up. Okay, we're done finally. Okay, so overall, like this is how it looks like. Even though the material doesn't seem to be uh, what I expect, okay, I, I actually want something that has more reflections, but I'm just gonna, I just did it by you know like grabbing some 
materials from the library just drag and drop okay so that's fine all right so kind of like gold a painted gold a brush a material uh, and uh, I know like uh, just now we would talk about I like, want to cut a hole here make it a, a more like full functional thing okay but since this is just for you know like uh, artist impression render so uh, we'll just leave it like this okay so uh, that's all for today's lesson and I do hope you guys learned something today if you have any questions regarding this lesson please feel free to drop the comments down below and if you like my contents please do consider subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and also turn on the bell notification so you won't miss any new content in the future and thanks and i'll see you guys in the next one